No, sir. Stand by to cast off. But, sir, it's important that we get to Liverpool. The answer is no, sir. We're bound for Bordeaux, and Bordeaux it'll be. But you have no cargo and... We're going in ballast, sir. And you have no passengers. I never have passengers. Captain, I will pay you to take us to Liverpool. Absolutely not. Who is the owner of this vessel? Perhaps he will listen to reason. Oh, well, now, sir, it just so happens you are speaking to the owner of this vessel, and I tell you, we are going to Bordeaux. Jenks, whenever you're ready, we'll get underway, sir. Aye, aye, Captain. Captain? Would you consider, then, sir, taking us to Bordeaux? I would not take you to Bordeaux, sir, if you were to pay me $2,000. I will pay you 2000 Huh? 2000 As you wish. A piece. As you wish. <laughs> You're mad. No, Captain. We are simply anxious to leave. Or don't. Excuse me, but you people are going to have to go below. I want to keep this deck clear for the crew. More than happy to comply, sir. Well, this hand is finished. How soon, monsieur? Any moment now. They're playing with fire, fog. Just a fix. I have crossed Paris at war, the Swiss Alps, the jungles of India and Burma. I have rickshawed through China, and when reaching America, undertaken a duel with a Mr. James Jesse. Do you really think I intend to give up now? No. Trumps. What? What is this? Oh, sir. What, 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 this is mutiny, you know, pure and simple. Mr. Fogg will take responsibility. He know what he's doing. Well done, Mr. Jenks. Well done, indeed. Gentlemen, we are now heading a course for Liverpool at full steam. By my calculations, we should make the crossing from this point in seven days. Keep up the good work. I must get to London in just over one week's time. Aye, aye, sir. All right, men, back to work. Forgive me for intruding, but I, um... Well, that is, um... Are you all right? Yes. 
I didn't see you all afternoon on deck, and uh, it occurred to me that perhaps we ought to have another... Um... Chat? Yes. The thought came to me this morning that, uh, as we near my homeland, I must be getting quite homesick for yours. No. No. Is that all you wish to say? I would, uh, You seem so very... melancholy. Is there something wrong? Wrong? What could possibly be wrong? I mean, we shall both be reaching our destination shortly, and that will be the end of it. We shall say goodbye. I dare say you remember Sir Francis Cromarty. Yes. Before he left us, he, he gave me a slender volume of Indian poetry. Passages has lodged itself in my memory, and I, uh, I hope you don't find this shocking. I'm listening. It goes. Beneath her long silken ashes, purest reflections of a celestial light swim the black pupils of her great, clear eyes, as in the sacred lakes of the Himalayas. How very lovely. Why should I be shocked? Because... Whenever I think of this passage, I think only of you, my dearest Emma. I do know this, that I care for you more than any person I have ever known. But the very thought of... Yes? It's too late for me. It's too late for me to even attempt to impose my rigid way of life on someone other than a servant. No. Perhaps you could change, Phileas. There are those people who can change their lives. But I feel I am not among them. No. I am not the one for you, my dear Aouda. I would that I were. Someday, Phileas. Someday you are going to be even lonelier than you are now. Sir. Yes, of course, Mr. Jones. You're going to have to make a decision very soon. So, what sort of decision? Since New York, we have been keeping up on full steam. Yes, I know. We could have gotten to Bordeaux on short steam, but not like this. Just exactly what are you trying to say, Mr. Jenks? Your coal, sir, is giving out soon. We'll have to go on very short steam now. It'll take a couple more days. That is the decision you present me with? Yes, sir. Mr. Jenks. Yes, sir. 
I want you to feed those boilers and keep the coal burning at full steam until it's exhausted. Yes, sir. Bring the captain on deck. Now? Now. Captain. Traitor. Pirate. Picaroo. Good afternoon, Captain. I do want to apologize for any inconvenience. You will pay for this, sir. Precisely what I had in mind. I should like to purchase your ship. Never. By all the devils, you shall not, sir. Captain, I regret to say that purchased or not, I am obliged to burn her. What did you say? In the upper part of her, at least. You see, the coal has given out. Burn my ship? A ship worth $20,000? In pounds, that's, um, I'll give you 30. What did you say? I'll give you 30. Sure. Quiet, Pastor Two. You will give me $30,000? It's yours. <laughs> oh. I speak with you, sir. Private. This is not easy for me, sir. See, uh, I am an honest man, and I cannot deceive you. This ship is, is more than 20 years old. I probably couldn't get more than 15. So. Thank you, sir. Uh, <clears throat> you are now the new owner of the Henrietta. Thank you very much, sir. My first order will be a tear of the parts. Mr. Jenks? What? Yes, sir. I want you to chop up everything that's wood. Everything? Frames, bulkheads, bunks, seats, tables, everything. Holy moly. <laughs> What's left now, sir, but the wheelhouse. Turn it down. And when it's gone? 47 miles left to Liverpool. That's all we need. Yes, sir. Anything, monsieur? Not yet. Everything is gone. There is nothing left to burn. What's that? Cool. Wait. Wait a moment. It's a Siegel, monsieur. No, by heaven, it is not. Land? England, my friends. England. <laughs> Twelve hours in which to reach London. We can make it easily, Monsieur. You have won.
Mr. Park, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, but would you be so kind as to tell me what's to become of the uh, Henrietta? It's all yours, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. You're a true gentleman, sir. Mr. Fogg? Yes? That is Mr. Filiax Fogg? Yes, what is it, Mr. Fix? We are once again on British soil, sir. We are indeed, sir. I arrest you in the name of the law. I beg your pardon? No, it is incumbent on me to hand you this warrant. No. Bank of England? I am a detective, sir. Good heavens. Always have been. Just a detective trying to do his duty. And now, sir, if you'll accompany me to the customs house, you'll be held there in custody until such a time as you are transferred to London. No, you cannot. Not now. He will lose the wager. Oh. No. Pass the two. Stop that. Stop that. Let him go. Do you hear me? <laughs> Mr. Fix. Detective Fix, if you don't mind, sir. If you represent the law, then I have no other course than to come with you. Excuse me, sir. It's 10.30, McBain's. I'm having my tea. Yeah, but it is urgent, sir. Damn it, it's always urgent. Bring him in. Uh, I would like you to meet uh, Mr. Folkestone, sir. Please, call me Hal. Uh, he has a notion, well, he is under the impression, sir, that he is Henry IV. Hal! Uh, but his identification proves otherwise. Have you interrupted my tea in order to introduce me to a lunatic? Have a look at this, sir. Look inside. You'll find there are 55,000 pounds in banknotes. What? Oh, my God! Once more, under the breach, dear friends, once more! Are these genuine? They're more than that, sir. More? I have identified these banknotes, sir, as the very same that were taken from this bank. Yeah. And if Mr. Folkestone does think that he is Henry IV, well, I can readily assure you, sir, he is our bank thief. Stop him! It's over now, Princess. No question about it. There is no time. Somehow I... I feel that I have failed him. 